St. Lucie's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves. St. Lucie's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves is the debut work of Karen Russell. It's a collection of 10 short stories that harbor on the inexplicable in our wildest of imaginations. The collection reads like a modern version of the Brothers Grimm fairy tales, where instead of a clear lesson, there exists true emotional arcs from a diverse set of characters that harbors on angst, melancholy, fear, loneliness, and despair, but told with a unique tongue that gives the works a fresh comical voice that makes difficult feelings palatable and easy to digest. Russell's characters are sometimes sassy, nerdy, uncomfortable, yearning, and always children lost in a world that is mysterious, magical, and unrelenting in its splendor. This is an especially meaningful edition of Lit Tips for me personally. I first read Karen Russell in college nine years ago. It was this anthology that reinvigorated my love of reading, and I am forever grateful for it. I hope you will share my love for this wonderful collection. Now join me as we embark on our journey into the stories of St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves. The first story of the anthology is one of my all-time favorite short stories, Ava Wrestles the Alligator. Ava and her sister Ossie are staying at their grandpa Sawtooth's old house in the swamp, waiting for their father, Chief Big Tree, to return from the mainland. Ava and her family are alligator wrestlers and run Swamplandia, an alligator wrestling theme park. Ava tells of her dead mother, her sister's ghost boyfriend, who she lets possess her for hours at a time, and the creepy presence of the Birdman. This short story first appeared in the literary magazine Zotrope, all story, when Russell was just 24 years old. Haunting Olivia is the next story in this collection that is both compelling and heart-wrenching. Timothy and his brother Wallow are intent on finding their dead sister Olivia's body in an old boat junkyard. With colorful characters like the boy's distant parents, crazy grandmother, Granana, and crab sledding, this story is both crushing as the boy's hopeless task becomes existential, and dare I say, haunting. Zizi's Sleepaway Camp for Disordered Dreamers brings an inspiring mix of style and form. It unites Russell's sleepy, dreamlike world with a complementary setting. The narrator is at a sleepaway camp due to his struggle with night terrors. He meets and falls for Emma, whom he shares a deep bond with. With the killing of sheep, the realization he is alone, and the world is as confusing as his dreams, we are left with a dry, relatable feeling. The Stargazer's Log of Summertime Crime is one of Russell's most humorous pieces. It follows the nerdy and hapless Ollie as he's looking for a specific constellation on the beach. As he geeks out about his collections and findings, we are introduced to the troublemaker Raffi and his girlfriend Marta. Raffi wants to see sea turtles hatch. Ollie follows the direction of Raffi throughout the story so he can be cool and fit in with Raffi. Ollie's sister, Molly, becomes disappointed in him because he's being fake instead of true to himself. From Children's Reminiscences of the Westward Migration is the first of Russell's collection that feels like it departs insofar as its setting. It is also one that explores the most in sense of magical realism as our protagonist Jacob's father is a minotaur. Like the cupboard wagons and mass migrations west, like the Oregon Trail, we follow a family journeying for a new beginning while Jacob struggles with his sense of identity. Lady Yeti and the Palace of Artificial Snows distances itself from the rest of the stories in the collection as it departs into the strange and uncanny. For some readers, it goes a little further in that direction than her other stories. We are taken into another business of entertainment, a shift back towards Ava and the alligator territory, but instead are met with a false artificial feeling as we learn more of Lady Yeti and her possible sister, possible alter ego, the Ice Witch. This story is told again from the point of adolescence, and we are met with the difficult realization that not everyone who was once in love stays in love. The City of Shells is delightfully claustrophobic as a child gets stuck in a giant conch at the City of Shells amusement park. The child Big Red is friends with Laramie, who makes Big Red uncomfortable for her newfound sexual desires. Raffi from the Stargazer's Log of Summertime Crime makes his way back into the story. But this story plays on the angst of growing up and self-understanding. 
Out to Sea is a humorous depiction of the aforementioned Grandpa Sawtooth and his close-minded perspective of the world. He is assigned a youth to assist and befriend him in a new program to ensure that no elderly person is left behind. An unlikely friendship is formed, but also the loneliness and innocent love one can yearn for when closed off from the rest of the world. In the next story, Accident Brief Occurrence number 00422, where Russell displays the place of a child in a failing marriage in Lady Yeti and the Palace of Artificial Snows. In this story, we see just how far a child will go to please their parents. The title story, St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves, is perhaps the story with the most striking characterizations and vivid imagery of girls on their way to becoming civilized. Werewolf parents send their children to a school run by nuns, where they are to break with their old werewolf tendencies. With Jeanette being the eldest in the class and most willing to change, and Mirabella, the youngest and unwilling, this raises a particularly interesting circumstance for our protagonist Claudette, who struggles with her sense of identity. The world Russell created with St. Lucy's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves is expanded into her second book and first novel, Swamplandia. It expands on the story in Ava and the Alligator. I encourage all who enjoy this book to explore more of Karen Russell's works. Thanks for tuning in to yet another edition of Lit Tips. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, like the video, and comment with any works you would like us to cover. See you next time, and keep reading.